Hello everyone, I am Shubham and in this video I am going to explain how you can install IBM Security Verify Access on vSphere. So I have already logged in into the vSphere and now first of all I will need to mount ISV ISO to the vSphere. So for that I can simply click on Actions and Edit Setting. You can go from here also as well as uh, go to Edit Settings. To mount the ISO, you can simply extend the CD or DVD drive 1 and click on browse, select the ISO file and that's it. So this is how you can easily mount the ISO file. Now to change the boot order like whether the system should be started from CD or DVD drive first or hard disk drive. You can do that. To do the changes, you can simply click on VM options, then boot options. From here, you can just add some delay into the boot. So it will take some time to boot the system and you can simply go to the BIOS and change the boot order. Now after making the changes, click on OK. As of now, my system is in power off mode. You can see there is no play button icon here. Now to start the system, click on this power on button and then click here, select the web console and launch it. So I will do the same and once it is open, click on anywhere on the web browser and use F2 function key to go to the BIOS. So let's get started. Power on, launch web console, click anywhere, press F2, then go to boot. Here you can see boot order. So as of now you can see uh, the first preferences is for the removable devices which is not attached. Now, if there are no removable devices, then the first preference will be for the CD-ROM. So on CD-ROM, we have attached the ISO. Then the third preference will be for the hard drive. But what I have done, I have already mounted the ISO and did the initial setup. Now I just need to change the boot order. So all the initial changes have been done. So I will just change the boot order to hard drive first. So to change the order, I can simply use up and down arrow on my keyboard then to change the value I can use plus to bring hard drive on top. Now you can see the second preference is for the hard drive and third is for the CD-ROM. So whenever uh, I will boot my system so the first preference will be for the hard drive then use F10 button in the bottom right corner you can see F10 is for the save and exit so I will use F10 click enter to save the changes. Now my system will be booted. Now you can see it is starting custom debug MSL events and everything. So wait until this process is finished. Now you can see it is showing me that unconfigured.appliance login. First of all, it is asking me for the username and then the password. So the default username is admin. Hit the enter button and the password is also same admin hit the enter button now it is showing me that welcome to ibm security verify access setup wizard uh, using the setup wizard you can view and accept the software license agreement to continue further click on enter now to display the license in any language you want you can click on one and then you can select the language for your preference to read the IBM terms, you can use 2 and hit the enter button. To proceed further, I will click on 5. Now if I enter 1, I will agree the license. So I will do the same. Now it is asking me that if I want to enable the FIPS 140-2 mode. So FIPS 140-2 standard is an information technology security approval program to certify the products to use in government departments and regulated industries such as financial and healthcare institute. Okay, I don't want to enable this. If I enable this, so there will be no option in future to disable it. So I will click on next screen. So use N, hit the enter button. Now it is asking me to change the appliance password. As of now, there is no need to change the password. If you want, you can use one and change the password. So I will use N. 
Now the hostname for this VM is showing me that unconfigured.appliance. So I just need to set up a hostname for this. To set up a hostname, enter one, enter the new hostname. So I will keep default hostname as per my VM name. Okay, we have successfully changed the hostname. Now click on next screen. If you want to display the devices setting or network related settings, you can use one. To display the policy, you can use two. To configure an interface, you can use three. So first of all, we are going to configure interface. So I will use three. To select an interface, first of all, I will use one. So we are going to use 1.1 interface here. We need to enable this interface. So click on one. Then it is asking me for IPv4 configuration mode. So I'm going to select manual mode. You can set up as per your preferences. As of now, I didn't added any IP address here. So I will use two to add an address. Enter the IP address you want. Then enter submit mask for your IP address. So I will use 255.255.255.0. Double five double five double five double five so now we want to set up this IP address for the management. So I will use one. We also need to enable this IP address. So use one. We have successfully added the IP for address. If you want to display it, you can use one and enter. You can see we have set up this IP address and its subnet mask. Now use four to finish the configuring addresses. It is now asking me to set up an IPv6 IP address. We are not going to use any IPv6 addresses. If you want, you can set up. So I will use two for manual and click on four because we are not going to add the IPv6 address. Enter. Now we need to set up a default gateway for our IPv4 address. So by using that default gateway, our system will be able to communicate with other systems. So use six. Your gateway address. Select the interface. So we are going to set up this gateway for 1.1 interface. Okay, we have successfully set up interface IPv4 address as well as set up our default gateway for IPv4. Now click on next screen. If you want to set up multiple DNS, so there are multiple options to set up a DNS server. You can also set up it from the graphical user interface. So I will just keep it as of now. So click on next screen. It is showing me my current time zone. If you want, you can just change your time, date and time zone from here. We will skip it for now. So click on next screen. Now it is showing me that summary of my configuration. So what option which I have enabled, what are my network configuration related changes as well as policies, what is my time zone. So you can just go through everything and click on accept the configuration. So use one and enter. As you can see, we have successfully installed the IBM security verify access appliance. So here we can see our VM name. You can use help button to get list of commands which you can use on CLI mode. You can also try to access this instance on GUI. So I'll just do the same. It is giving me warning because I am using self signed certificate. Click on advanced and accept risk and continue. Now the graphical user interface is visible. Username is admin and the password is default one and login. If you want, you can just change the password from this graphical user interface.
we have successfully logged into our IBM Security Verify Access appliance. So this is how you can easily install IBM Security Verify Access. Thank you.